Hi everybody. A few months ago we have discussed uh, at length the information on the Wicked Agency and what it entailed, how intricate the web of control had developed, how in alignment it was and is with the darkening process which is the alchemical principle um, for those who know alchemy, the darkening is a required phase in terms of the development stage before there is uh, the next stage, which would be the light aspect of that darkening, which means I'm not talking about duality. I'm talking about when there is a darker element at play, you would look at a different frequency of light that is formulated within the darkening process which means a metaphysical principle or process that we're looking at information that was once hidden is now coming to the foreground and basically the information that comes through not only highlights um, those that have been hiding behind masks as you have noticed over time now um, but also new wisdom that comes to mind for you, new knowledge in terms of what you've been experiencing, a uh, great deal of information that has assisted you in your personal life path. Which leads us to the next very interesting thing and why I spoke about the Wicked Agency to begin with and what there is that entails that. For those of you who have been working with the connection of the original creative force, uh, also the name, also as great spirit, I want to speak with those that have been working very arduously on that connection within themselves. And I'm not um, specifically dis disconnecting or, um, you know, discarding those that have not worked on that connection before. I'm, I'm talking about people who have been intricately involved and investigating the information and applying it to themselves by working with the philosophy as it has been given. The philosophy in itself has been the uh, tool to help um, disruptive manner to handle the information and the experience itself on a deeper spiritual level within the self with regards to how to deal with X, Y, and Z, A, B, C, those who work with masks hiding in the background, those who come to the foreground now without masks, they are essentially, like I said, like the emperor is now realized that he is naked. There is no other way to look around it. I've taken all of those basically videos since the Wicked Agency and <clears throat> excuse me, you have come to the realization that information is very much um, tangible now and that is essentially what that means. Which led me to the next part of the exploration process uh, of which you would most likely find of interest, those of you may find it of interest, for you as a person who is aware, who is a unique being, who is able to understand when you are being uh, word saluted by people, because um, that, that seems to be another, it's, it's a trait, a narcissistic trait of the type of persons that you will be dealing with, just as a fact, just make peace with it right now, that's a fact. So what I want to bring to your attention is the following. When you become connected with the original creative force, you create a bond of love with that force, which becomes a type of cord in itself, which is then a type of, you could say, you could call it a ladder, you could call, although I don't believe in the hierarchy process, I do, however, believe that it becomes something that becomes part of you. So in other words, the more self-love you have for yourself, and I'm not saying, when I say self-love, I'm talking about self-care. I'm not referring to, to the people, some people that seem to think that if they think of self-love, that if they can fixate on the idea of love itself, that they think that they are then closer to self-love. And, and on the contrary, it really then becomes the opposite for certain people such as those. I'd like to bring the information directly 
um, into being so that you are able to understand it. When you are in contact with the original creative force, such as Great Spirit, you become aligned with that frequency of creative process, of the materialization aspect, of uh, the aspect of love. Love is the highest form of energy and frequency that the realm, all realms, are keyed into. It is the only powerful energy in all things that is either the most coveted or the most try to destroy love or try to look for it in all manner, manner, manners of forms, um, which means love is essentially the most remarkable, powerful tool that ever exists within the history, I suppose, of humanity. And in this way, it does require for you to become aware of the seriousness of the subject itself. I'm talking about becoming aware of that connection. Many of you who've been working with me and who've been applying the philosophy in your personal lives have experienced that connection and now you know for sure that the information was not just willy-nilly placed on the channel for no reason at all. Those are the tools that assist you to actually have the wisdom to see what everything looks like inside of the darkening. So be it as it may, I am referring to the bond that you are sharing. Now this bond becomes some kind of cord, if you could call it that, that you are then aligned with. The cord in itself is not an actual physical cord. You have to look at it in a metaphysical level where you are experiencing the cord as a type, I'm going to use the word accordance, where you are in accordance to the connection of the original creative force, Great Spirit. Um, this is not to be associated with the idea of um, any other type of man-made name for a type of God. I'm referring those that name, that title, not even as a title, but as a descriptive um, aspect, which would be important to take note of. You are in the moment that you establish this chord or accordance with the original creative force in an alignment. And the alignment in itself is what then helps you to propel forward, to go towards what it is that you wish to experience. Um, however, only if you are focused on the ability of self-love, self-care, which is the highest force that there exists within all things that are alive, which closest next to it would be uh, life and then death. So love, life and death, those are the very three most powerful forces that exist within this realm and any other realms that there may exist in a, adjacent to this one. Okay, so for all of these realms, those three building blocks have always been put in place. They are always the most important um, blocks that have been um, set in alignment with love. Okay, so you have life, love, and death in that order. All right, if you are able to understand um, how to love yourself, which it is an ongoing daily process. So there is no one day or final day where you will say, okay, yes, I've now conquered the ability to love myself. I now know how to be numero uno. I know how to be this, this and this and that. There is no day like that. There is also no day set or linear measurement set for the time of awareness either. It happens by the day. It happens day by day. It happens every moment of your existence where you are experiencing that. This cancels out, I'm going to use that word, I hate that word, this uh, eradicates that belief that you have to live forever, okay, because you do not live forever. If you were meant to live forever, the world would be a different place to exist within. You wouldn't have decay happening. You wouldn't have aging take place. So by itself, as much as there are those who try to outwit aging in itself, they are also sadly mistaken and learn the hard way in the lessons as they go through it. 
and many of you are now aware as well that it also is the announcement of the decaying of the old age of the prior existence which means we are in an age where we are now able to essentially control our own existence i am not referring to the mundane exoteric uh, exopolitical chaos nonsense that is being spewed all over the place so that people must buy into it because that is a hurry up and wait thing you're always going to be disappointed at the end i'm not saying that you must live in chaos either i'm saying if you live within an internal order ordered state of consciousness you will be able to understand how not to become part of the table of many fruits that have been placed in front of you and you have been warned which not to eat that is a very loaded statement and that is important for some to know that i felt i needed to bring up as well so to come back to what i'm trying to explain what is going on is for those of you who have experienced this bond now and this in accordance with the original creative force because i know there are many of you that are doing that probably most of you um, there are also those who are trying to cancel the idea of the original creative force they are on this channel so just heads up on that those are the ones without the masks they do present themselves now even more so when you are in accordance with the original creative force you are becoming aware of the element that the original creative force is moving you towards in other words you are being guided by trusting what is within you by having better dreams etc etc whatever the case may be however you see guidance for you you are aware of that principle you are now going to go through life and you're going to experience these things and you're going to enjoy the the, the goodness that comes to you from certain moments and place some kind people will give this to you or do this for you it doesn't matter in what way you equate being guided as um, it will be with love most surely it will always be with love but the more you become aware of this love that is now coming to you from what you are radiating out from within you out for your immediate environment and those in your life you are energizing that cord and that in that cord becomes a very visible cord um, many who see this cord wish to rip it away or take it from you. They think that this cord is your, um, uh, your abundance or they may think that this cord relates to your uh, existence of your um, higher self or your identity as they think it might be. They think that this cord is something that they must steal from you or some may think that they could try and swap a destiny to actually carry heavy the cord themselves some of them are so deluded that they think the cord is your holy grail either way in either way form these are all aspects of people that are externally focused on the world for abundance for love for reciprocation for spiritual recognition for acknowledgement for whatever you want to call it um, these are people that function in the world itself that do not understand that you have worked very hard on your internal self to build yourself up and to actually form that very serious pact or cord or um, bond with the original creative force that bond is your ability to have your coin your yours it belongs to you it does not belong to anybody else that is your inheritance okay and that is how you've worked to create your inheritance not the physical world to inherit but the bond to have with the original creative force because those of you who have been doing that are now in that frequency to experience that now here comes the nitty-gritty it becomes the most coveted thing that those around you may then experience mainly for the reason that you've become whole and when you are whole you are unique uh, as this channel is unique as the information is unique you are unique individual original in yourself you have become completely whole there is no boundary that has been broken in your existence you have cleared up all the contracts and you are still healing you do not have to live to become perfected 
in any way, shape or form. But the bond itself is the perfection of the original creative force of love. So you don't become perfect, but the love is a perfected love. And we say that because there is nothing more than the most powerful force of love to begin with. So now you become the most coveted being. You are suddenly visible to a lot of things, people and places. And these things are trying to actually ascertain this frequency from you because it, you're so happy. There must be something that you're doing that I want that as well. Either they're going to come to you to try and word sell at you to try and make you feel like you need to share of your cup. Uh, or they're going to try and take from you. This is a fact. So keep this in mind. Think of this as the as a heads up. OK, if you've not already experienced it, when you experience this process, be mindful that it is because you are whole that you have a boundary around you. The acceptance and the awareness of being whole in the self, mind, body, soul and spirit within the highest perfected frequency of love with the original creative force as great spirit is a boundary in itself, which means it discards those that are trying to come into your life to try and take from you or steal from you. It discards them. It basically puts them out of your temple. They are thrown out. Okay. Or they are left in the street or they are left in the dust or their masks are fallen off or they are now naked. Okay, so that is what that meant in that story in the Bible verses back then, except it was very terribly rewritten and the essence of the information got lost. So what I'm trying to explain to you is you will see this happen in your community where people will become weird by your presence. They will be I'm, I'm using very derogatory words so that you understand what I'm trying to say because you are in eternal balance. You are master of your light and your dark, which means you are master of your frequencies of masculinity and femininity as creative principles, not recognitions of what sex you are or that you're a man or a woman. But to be in control of your masculine and your feminine principles would be to be in control of your yin and your yang inside of you where the center point, which is left out in the yin and the yang, is the heart. And that is why this channel is very unique, because we recognize that there is a heart in the frequency, which is the direct form of access to create the bond, the cordance, the accord, the accordance or the cord or the, the 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 sacred union with the original creative force okay it needs the heart it needs the heart of understanding it needs the feeling of love it needs the feeling of kindness it needs the feeling of remembering that one can actually accommodate the 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 the, the warmly warmness of uh boundaries having parents having people in your traditions in your tribe, in your family, in your community, in your city, in your town, in your street, whatever you want to call it, in your friendship, in your whatever family, um, to harmonize that frequency of love, to then be in a set, in a point of boundary, of protection, of wholeness, to have the remembrance of love from the, from the, the mom, the dad, the person who was the mom or the dad for me, the Induna, the uncle, the, the, the Gogo, the auntie, the Oma, the, uh, the granny, the grandfather, all of those people, these things that are in the ancestral pathway of your traditions, whatever you are, wherever you are, and in a much entirety of a world. If you are able to understand that these people have all contributed in a whole manner to your existence to where you are now. So in other words, taking remembrance of those things. Now, this 
bond that you are building with the original creative force or great spirit um, is the bond that allows you to experience those things. Integrity, love, respect, honor, kindness, warmth, uh, forgiveness, peace, uh, humility, um, to eat, to feel satiated, to be loved, etc., 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 all of those things, it allows you to form from that cord. Remember now, the basket with the fish and the bread, okay? Keep that in mind to one side, and I'll explain to you. This cord that you're sharing with the original creative uh, spirit, this bond that you're sharing becomes a multiple streamed bond. In other words, the bond or the cord becomes multiple cords. So you essentially then have a piano or a guitar with many strings that you can access because you are in, you are, a, you are, you are woken up to experience that feeling. Not woke, please. Woke and awaken is not the same thing. Woke is the past of awake that is something that is of bury, of dead. Okay. There is nothing mentioned here about woke. So please do your research and understand what that word means. It's a weaponized word. Okay. It is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about becoming aware of knowing that you're experiencing wholeness within yourself. And while you're experiencing this wholeness within yourself, you're able to experience the feeling that this experience in itself, in the, 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 the foundation of being whole, is multiplying for you. Okay, And that means you are then reminded of the beauty and the warmth and the kindness of what love means to you in your environment, whether it is whatever it is, as I've just said. And this in itself becomes the form of protection over you. That in itself becomes the many fish that suddenly can feed a nation, for example. This is one bond that becomes a multiple streamed frequency of love okay and that in itself becomes so big that it touches other people in ways that they may feel either repulsed by or embracing it but you will find those that will try and take it from you and that means that what you will see when that happens is depending on what sort of um type of person you're dealing with if you're dealing with a person that is a narcissist then their frequency will, because they're fixated on your energy, will become even more pronounced. So if the guy is obsessed with his nose, his nose will be even bigger on his face. You'll see it immediately. Or if the guy is obsessed with witchcraft, he will become extremely visible as this weirdo that's doing kitchen magic behind your back to try and steal your information. You'll see it. You'll know it. You'll feel it. Okay. I acknowledge that those things exist. You know that they exist. I'm talking to many of you who are and have been experiencing that and if you um, and how you've been able to go through it. OK, and some of you are still trying to get through it. So what I'm trying to tell you is that the more balanced you become with in absolute alignment within yourself, the more love you have, the more love you receive from the original creative force, the more love you can give back to the original creative force the more you receive, the bigger your cup, the more the streams or the, the cords of energy happen for you. And those cords of energy brush over everything around you. Think of it like a brush, like a, like a, like a paintbrush or a broom, where it just brushes over all things around you because your, your love is expa expanding out. Your energy is expanding out. And you're touching a lot of people around you because you're feeling so amazingly warm and loved inside so that what it does is it as it brushes over that weirdo that's sitting in the corner there that's actually a jealous fucker um, he becomes excessively more jealous he becomes excessively more uh, upset about your frequency and then decides to do something to try and remove that energy away from himself or herself this is where the crux comes in this 
in itself is how karma then starts to set in place because essentially self-love as i said is the most powerful force in the existence of the entire human existence and everything else around it that it does exact a um, energy to clarify to measure up to judge the self that person becomes their biggest judge if they pass over while they're in that place they stay in that space they don't go anywhere else they don't there's no migration there's no progress unless they actually learn to suddenly realize oh okay i need to just stop focusing on my neighbor's wife or my neighbor's husband um and i'm able to to you know i should actually have looked at myself why i was so insecure about myself in the first place that was the wound i need to do clear that belief system there is mercy for those there is no mercy for those however that do not despite knowing what it is that they need to work on within themselves that do not wish to back off to go towards you while you're doing your self-love work to try and destroy your energy there is no mercy for them don't forget that they will be injured they will be hateful they will be aggressive they will attack and attack you from all dizzy heights and levels and, ang and angles but the whole the more stronger you become internally in your energy the less the attacks will happen at you and the more the attacks will actually happen against themselves so the stronger you become in terms of being able to uh, move yourself around those frequencies while you're in your whole space um, be mindful that your frequency is the frequency that's essentially um, affecting them it's like basically um, exposing a bunch of things underneath underneath the sub the the bottom the underground or the under belly of the beast and the stronger your energy becomes the more you're able to actually disrupt that frequency of the beast like behavior in these people the more they will re retaliate but remember what essentially holds them together is really the belief their belief in the egregore of the lord pain itself and that is their belief so you're essentially dealing with something that does require greater understanding of knowing why they do what they do knowing why there's they they are narcissistic in their existence and why they will be attacking you from dizzy heights but essentially the more they do this after you've done what you've done after that act uh, that that um work i suggested you do do the the less they will be able to actually affect you because the more it'll go straight back to them they will be facing the uh the the experience of having some mercy if they change their frequency if they do not and they're aware of this like i said it will be merciless for them no matter how they wish to call upon grace mercy these things cannot be afforded to those type of people because they've done it with an awareness of their actions so um things are actually getting quite heated up right now um i would say uh keep yourself aware um make sure you're clothed and not have a misconception that you think you're clothed when you're actually naked because there's a lot of naked emperors around and empresses if you want to call it like that and they're upside down as well so for them the tower is now not happening it is now and uh, this is something to keep in mind while you're going through with your life especially while you're going to be in the last uh, month of the year where you are having to be part of social engagements um, and so forth and rituals so yes um, as i said the tower is now many things are falling down um, and many other things will come in its place and while this happens um, you just keep focusing on your own internal balance and your connection with the original creative force in a loving way um, fyi if you're a narcissist idiot uh, who tries to use witchcraft to try and dispel or do spell work on the actual connection itself of other people 
um, that is it, it is null and void because it is a man-made thing. It doesn't work. Um, the only thing that is inherently very um, powerful is the love that actually overrides all of that stuff. You become judged within yourself. And those things that you try and send to people in your witchcraft manner, whatever it is, to people to hurt them, um, the same thing happens to them. They basically take themselves out because those that are sent to people that are in a loving space essentially unmask the entity that is sent to that person, which is, as I said to you, uh, really a person who has passed away, whose spirit was used for that particular purpose to begin with. So seriously, um, that person then requires forgiveness, that spirit that was used in the name of an entity, and that person then returns to where it, where he or she came from. So your, your, your entities and things you keep sending don't exist. They are false things, constructs of your make-believe egregore man-made God, which has zero perspective and existence in a uh, realm where the original creative force exists. And has always existed and perhaps it was meant to have lasted this long because there is a time and a place for most things even as they cry out they may be exactly like that man who passed away uh, where he said please just can you send a prophet over to my family and tell them you know I fucked up I, I need someone to help me uh, I just need a drop of water I just need some someone to forgive me when they did it's not gonna happen there's no mercy for them therefore their energy becomes dissolved and they then are returned into a form of energy that is formless that has then the capacity to become reformed again and that is a story for something that is another day so to come back the more balanced you are the more whole you are the more whole you are the more you are able to understand what behavior is invoked in people okay the next thing that happens is Let's say you're in an environment or a, a situation where you are, where there is a lot of pagan belief. Uh, and let's say, when I say pagan belief, I'm saying people that believe in nature, people that worship nature, people that worship the material nature of things. So in other words, going to do rituals and going to go and um, do old witchcraft, whatever you want to call it, white magic, black magic, uh, whatever, okay? When they do these things, let's say you're in an environment that is riddled with that sort of thing. And when I say riddled, I'm saying there's like a lot of them, a lot of them all around you. You'll be surprised how many there are that are worshipping the nature reality where they pray to things that are outside of themselves, idols, icons, um, gods, demons, spirits, angels, whatever you want to call it, things that are outside of themselves when they worship those things, war in the relationship in itself, which is error, an error of the human condition, I would say. Um, we've spoken about that idol thing as well. Um, that your frequency then creates a discordance in their nature. Their very nature becomes disrupted, discorded, and nature in itself then reacts against not just them, but you as well. Uh, in the example, for example, uh, suddenly there's a cloud burst on your road on your way home and it suddenly becomes a flood, a flash flood, and boom, it's gone. That wasn't any man-made man -made manipulation, but we won't discard that either. You have to use your common sense to figure that one out. But you have to also keep in mind that sometimes these things... So this flash flood is so bad it actually washes the road away before you, from, your, from your home to where you work. You can't get to work now because of that. But, you don't, but you've forgotten that you've actually pissed off your neighbor about a month ago who is an avid uh, stone worshipper or tree worshipper or, or ancient god worshipper or whatever you want to call it. And basically he was pissed off because your energy in terms of who you are, in your grace of connection with an original creative force that actually existed before idols actually were made, um, had suddenly brushed over their heads 
and really post them off. And essentially their nature in itself had become so disrupted and angry that it was basically having a, a, a temper tantrum. You could call it like that. That happens. Okay. However, what you need to take in mind when something like that happens, and I'm not saying every flash flood is something like that. I'm just using an example. I'll give you another one. Um, is that you were still safe. Your car was not washed away. You basically were stopped right before it happened. You were safe, which means remember now this love that you have, this bond, this your your um, token of of who you are in your power um, is secure, and you are cared for and protected at all times because you are whole. Remember, people who have no boundaries become the puppets of these frequencies. So I'll talk about it in a second. Keep that in mind. Remember boundaryless people. I'll talk to you in a second about that. So you were safe no matter how strong this flash flood happened. You're, you didn't wash away. You were safe and dry. You could find a way to reroute, to get to home, to work, to whatever, and you're okay. But now the succession happens over time. Uh, your sewage system suddenly packs up for no reason. I mean, no reason at all. It just packs up and you need to get someone to come and clean it out for you because it was like really insane that it actually happened. And or, for example, um, you are surrounded by a breakout of bees just all over or or wasps or uh, it doesn't matter. The fact is, I'm trying to explain to you that nature in itself reacts to try and pummel that frequency because that person is a nature worshiper. OK, now. What do you do in that? Well, number one, you know you're safe. You're safe all the time. You're just observing this and you have to work on controlling your self-consciousness about that, about wondering what the fuck is actually going on because this is a what the fuck. And getting through that process, you suddenly realize, oh, actually, oh, now I know. It's about um, John. He really lost it, you know, when I actually mentioned something about what I'm doing and you asked me about what that tattoo mean meant and blah 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 and then this happened um just this didn't stop okay and once you come to that point of realization that you are actually in that presence of oh actually it's because my energy brushed over your head and you just got a pissed off person once you realize that the energy just removes its sting completely gone out of the picture it's as if it's never happened I do wish for you to actually keep notes of these things so that you are able to track it through and maybe teach your kids how to take note of these things. But then that is up to you as well. So now, what happens to people that have absolutely zero boundaries? That are basically essentially uh, uh, um, external worshippers, materialists, um, people who believe in duality um, and nothing else, people that focus on money only, People that have, that have no boundary. I'm not saying people who have money are people without boundaries. I'm saying people who are worshipping money as a god. I'm talking about those. I'm talking about the extreme forms. I'm talking about people that are obsessed and unable to focus on themselves, but are obsessed in trying to live in your shoes or obsessed in focusing on what you're doing every day of your life. Um, trying to know what you're doing, creeping around in the background, ass creeping around the background, fishing up to try and fish out to see who you are, what you do, what you do, what you're doing, what you're doing, type of energy, okay? I'm talking about people that have no boundaries in that, but I'm not talking about the common insecure person or ignorant as well. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who have absolutely zero boundaries. These people are the ones that actually form the building blocks for a many-faced God, which is that entity that the agency worships or is made up of. So now the many-faced God has been mentioned in that series called Game of Thrones, where they wrote a lore about that. And it's something to keep in mind just as a fact that, yes, there are people that actually worship certain things and those things become egregoric in its nature. And if you don't know what the egreg what egregore means, please Google it. Um, 
egregore in itself is something that becomes conscious. If you, if you, the worshippers of the pen uh, will kill in the pen's name. The pen is an immaterial thing. Okay, it is given the name the great pen, and all those who are worshipping the great pen will kill in the great pen's name. It will worship in the great pen's name. It will sacrifice everything in the name of the great pen. But it's a dead thing. Okay, it's an idol. It's a whatever you want to call it, a widget. Okay, God widget. And this thing becomes the it's not this thing that becomes the actual reality, but the energy around the energy around the pen becomes electrifying. And that creates an electromagnetic field for all of these worshippers of the pen. And that becomes the many faced God, the many faced representatives of the God called pen. So that in itself gives you an example of what you're actually dealing with. Now, imagine how amplifying that um, over time. It now becomes uh, now once it was a feathered pen, then it became a pencil and then it became a clutch pen and then it became an ink pen and then it became a purple pen and then a yellow pen and then a blue pen, etc, etc. And then it changed its shape a little bit. And so it looked then it looked like this type of pen and so forth and so forth and so forth. All right. So. That is the many-faced representations of the many-faced God called pen. Okay. So, what do you do in an instance like that? You as a whole person, now you are looking after your family, you're doing your thing, you've got your garden going, you've got your sun stuff, your solar, whatever, your water, you've got all of those things going on there. And... You're just living as best as you can, but you know you're focusing on the love inside of your family. You have a you have a relationship that's like kind of going and getting better over time. You're getting better and better at loving your husband or your wife or your kids. You're giving them some education um, at home, etc., etc. Right. What happens to you when you are understanding this now? Nothing happens to you. What becomes of this is you become aware of what you're actually dealing with. It's just the fact that your energy has brushed over it and it's basically exposed for you how to see all the many faced God worshippers of the God called pen. And in such a way, it can't touch you. It can't actually physically hurt you. It can only distress you through different kinds of things. It uses the idea of synchronicity into a negative way. In other words, an inverted synchronicity is where you are seeing things like, let's say you're afraid of spiders and you'll see spiders everywhere. So it becomes an inverted synchronicity for you. Now you're being shown all these things. Ah, oh, it's chaos. It's apocalypse. They're going to they're gonna blow up this country. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. Ah, oh, I can't handle this crap. But then I remembered someone told me, stop looking at that bullshit. Stop feeding my light energy to it. So I went, okay, switch the TV off. Delete the stuff on my phone. Look at something else. Go read a book. Go go outside in the garden. Go have a picnic in the town. Do whatever you want to do. Just there. You've just done that. And you, you're now starting to feel like a little weird. Sort of like uncomfortable in your stomach. You're thinking like, oh, feeling a bit nervous there. I don't know how to deal with that thing. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, it's like knocking at your door your door your door your con your temple door it's knocking there knock knock knocking knock 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 um okay now it's not getting your attention because you're like ah screw it i'm actually gonna focus on this thing huh focus on my wife focus on my beautiful kids focus on my dog focus on my plants focus on my painting focus on writing my thoughts do yoga do exercise go do 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 those things you do you at all times you're doing it with love and now it gets desperate because now, remember now, your energy is brushed over it. It's been triggered now because it's now suddenly aware that you can see it. Okay. So now it's looking for a place in. So suddenly your great aunt who you haven't spoken to in 10 years because time got to hold of you and it's such a normal thing. You raised your kids and you didn't have time and basically that's what happened and you've forgotten to talk to your auntie. Whatever you want to do, when, however you want to say it. And she calls you and says, Oh, did you hear? So and so wants to blow up the country. Um, I'm so worried about my friends and family in 
Land nod. Ha ha. And she just bends your ear for at least an hour, maybe two, maybe three if the most. At the most, and you remember, but, oh yeah, this is why I don't talk to this auntie because she just doesn't stop talking. And that is how it gets into your energy because your first reaction is that hysterical stress state that actually makes you feel like you are then wrapped into their bullshit which because that thing wants to feed on your energy remember it always want it wants your cup it wants that cord of energy now when that happens if you want to be rude be rude i am i would just do that personally let me put it straightforward to you i will just say i'm sorry i have to finish this uh, thank you. I'll talk to you again. Bye. But that's me. But that's me. If you're not as rude as I am, then what you can do is you then are aware of that state of consciousness that you were just worked up now. And you are you you will then find yourself back to yourself again. Pull yourself towards yourself. Go back outside. Go do your mantras. Go do some exercise. Move around a little bit. Go have a smoke. Go do something. Go make a cup of coffee. Go make a cup of tea. Go have to go do something. Go just go outside of that space. Leave your phone inside and go outside. Exchange location is what I'm trying to say. Exchange location. Get into a car, go drive somewhere. Step outside, walk outside. If you can't walk outside and there's snow, then go into another room. A room that you have created for yourself or a little space or a little table or a little carpet which you can create for yourself as a little sacred space okay and that means it's a space where you go and you chill out you tune out and chill out all of that which has just happened say to yourself do your mantras reconnect the energy with the loving feeling that you've got okay i've just given you a few things here okay it's not a lot of hard work if you really care about yourself um really these things should be something that you would do every day of your life the more you do this, the more it becomes a habit and the more it becomes something to help you in the long run. This is, after all, the information to give you, to help you, so that you can help yourself, so that you're able to get out and not come back or go elsewhere into other realities. It's entirely up to you. You do actually have that opportunity to do that too. So, what if this environment now with this we're with these worshippers of this pen, okay? What if, and these are people that you know. These are maybe your friends and your family and people that you actually care for. You know, you didn't think that maybe they would get sucked into that worshipping of the pen, but they do. They, they watch the news religiously every day. They believe that the weather must be predicted every day. So the more people that look at the weather predictions will make the weather happen the way that people predict the weather to happen. Um, that's just how it works. It's the... Double slit experiment. Light creates light. Light comes back. Light creates the energy. The image happens. Manifestation. Materialization just happens all the time. Okay. You don't have to watch Gaia MTV to know that this is the information that it is. It's inherent in you. It's always been there. I'm just reminding you about this. So what you then do with the worshippers of the pen is the following. You actually write down. Because you know these people. Because you care about them. It doesn't matter who they are to you. It could be someone that you know who knows another one, who knows that person, so and so. It could be even like that. You could be removed a little bit from them. But it does help to focus on bringing in the connection of integrity. You remember Peter was an integrous, integrous person back in the day when you worked at this company. You know that they are integrous people. They, they just mesmerized and glimmered by the lunacy of the god pen so all you know all you do is you go okay i'm actually wanting my strings of energy to really touch them in a very um in, in a loving way i don't want them to get all distressed out of themselves and attack me for it because i actually don't really have anything against them i'm just loving li loving myself and living my life so i would then think of of John and Peter and whoever the friends are, these people and the place, who they are, and connect with the understanding that the awareness becomes integrous. Integrity, love, self-love, respectful connections to the, to the family, 
focus on the family. You think these things for those people in your mind. Okay. If you think things like, I actually wish that guy would just like take himself out. That's not going to work because it'll backfire back at you. So you don't do that. You just send what you wish for them to be and you stop. You just say, I want John to be a happy man. I want him to be in his family. I want him to be a recognized father. I want her to be a recognized mother. Sarah really deserves to be recognized as a wonderful mother. She is very kind. She's actually a good teacher. My kids have gone to school with her and they came out really amazing. And I don't know why she can't stand me right now. Um, don't go there. Just write all these positive things about them. They're, they have beautiful grandparents who love them. They raise them with beautiful kindness. They're warm. They're integrous. They're very focused on the traditions of the community, of the tribe, of the environment. They very much love the environment. They love animals. They care. You know, you focus on all those things that are inherent of the good things that these people have. Okay. And that is what you do. Because what you then do is you feed that frequency, that thing that wants to take your, this, this octopus hand that wants to grab your, your cup. The more you pull away, the more the hand comes at you. And you basically push the hand back by saying, okay, I know you're actually a kind person. You're actually this, uh, you have integrity in your household. You've got wonderful ancestors and grandparents and people that have raised you really well. You're actually a very warm person. You really love to work with animals. There you go. And it goes back. The energy just pulls away from you. That in itself then dismantles and frees up the people that are trapped in the cult of the many-faced God that worships the pen. And that is how you disconnect that energy. That is your, that's all you have to do. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are in the world, where you are in the global scheme of things, or in the realm scheme of things, However you want to see the world, because the world is based on perception in itself, as I've said many times. You set these frequencies in place. It is up to you, each and every one of you, to do that. It's not just up to one person to do that. It is a, a many level, many frequency leveled action that has to take place. However, if there is, if those people do not, if some people become even more aggressive against you, then they take themselves out eventually. They, they are removed because then by that time, John and his family and his wife, they've all become really big community people. They've affected everybody else around them. And so what that does is that energy removes, much like the art of war, the entity, the this 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 thing that is a that is a, a thorn in the side of the community, it removes it, it ostracizes it, it actually expels it out. And that is basically how it works. So keep this in mind. I thought I'd share this with you, uh throw some ideas around. Um this is part of the philosophy, but I think can also stand on its own. But this is for people that are aware of how to connect with the original creative force through the bond of love. Um, and yes, and we will talk again. I hope that this has helped and given you some insight. Until next time.